from the Batheads Eyewear Studios in Speedway, Indiana, this is The Skinny. Brought to you by Toyota, Rhino Classifieds, General Tire, and Dream Giveaway. This segment of The Skinny is brought to you by General Tire. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire. General Tire's Grabber X3 Mud Terrain Tire offers aggressive styling and is engineered for durability with innovative performance features that are ready to carry you through extreme mud, dirt, and rock-covered terrain. For extreme traction that's ready for anything and rugged styling to match, look no further than the Grabber X3. Make your anywhere possible by visiting GeneralTire.com today. Hey, race fans, I'm Michael Young, and this is The Skinny. The show goes remote this week. Rico and Ken are already there. We're going to the racing capital of the world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, for a very special event called Rev Indy. And what Rev Indy does is basically raises money for IU Health. The funds then go to take care of the drivers and the patrons at the IU Health Infield Medical Center. And then the extra funds will go to take care of critical care patients here in the state of Indiana. Lots of great food, lots of great fun, and lots of familiar faces. Time for me to get ready and meet the guys. It's Rev Indy at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And this is The Skinny. We're here with Rev Indy with Romain Grosjean. He is the chair of Rev Indy. Do you even know, what does the chair do at Rev Indy? Well, I try to promote the Rev Gala. You know, I'm here and doing selfies and being part of the, the crowd and the fans. And I think there isn't a better place to do a gala than Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The place is such incredible. You know, there is the cause uh, for fundraising for the uh, Indian Institute Health Institute is, is amazing. You know, they looked after us at a race, uh, but also about everyone here that comes at the Indy 500 and everyone in, in Indianapolis. So. That's, that's really nice. And I love food and there's chefs. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy here. So you're French. What is the cuisine that you go to for comfort food? What, what makes you happy when you eat? Well, the barbecue makes me happy, you know. Well, that's not even French, no, though. No, but you know, in the States. So I get to get, uh, you know, the, the feel for it. Uh, but it's some macaroons and pain au chocolat at Chef Ben for tomorrow morning. Uh, there's some great Italian dishes. There's, there's some really good restaurants and really good food through the U.S., you know. Uh, you don't need to go to fast food. I think if you look a little bit into it, there's some amazing places. What's been the biggest surprise since you've come to the United States that you weren't quite expecting? Uh, the support from the fans. It's been incredible. I mean, uh, Chicago, I make selfies every block. Uh, at the racetrack here when I finish second at the GMI Grand Prix. People were cheering so loudly from the grandstands. It's been incredible. And uh, at the races, you know, uh, people bringing me fireman shirts, T-shirt. I've got like a collection going now. Um, it's, it's been really nice. You will be back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in a couple of weeks. But Nashville next weekend, a whole new circuit for everybody. How do you like your chances at a, at a brand new course? Well, you know, I think uh, we've got as many chances as the others, which is great, and we're going to do our best. Uh, the only thing you can control is what you do, so we're going to work on the car to make it as fast as we can, and uh, if it's faster than the others, then uh, we're going to try to go for pole position in the first win. That's a very political way to say it. I like that. So you took a photo on Twitter the other day. Your name, Grosjean Avenue in downtown Indianapolis, and oddly enough, there was like a banner in the background Promoting fire safety, uh, uh, the irony, it's, it's crazy. I didn't even realize when I made a picture. And then I put it online, and then I saw the comment from the people saying, have you seen the banner beyond? And then I zoom in, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is so good. I mean, you know, I joke about it. I really like to. It's part of my life. It's part of my story. I've got the scar for my hand. That's going to stay here forever. But it's part of who I am today. Probably you are happy I am today. It's part of, of that is because I was, you know, almost dead for a bit and, and here yeah, I'm racing having fun my family following me and just being super happy reflecting back on Bahrain and where you are now could you ever have dreamed a better story for yourself in your life no I don't think you could even write the story I think it's uh, you know it's probably why the fan have embraced my career so much and the support has been incredible and that's why I want to give back as much as I can because I'm lucky to be here and lucky to be alive 
Thank you. Let's go have some barbecue. Yeah, let's do it. There you go. Romain Grosjean. Doug Bowles, the president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway here as well. Of course, we would expect you to be here. What an amazing event. And, of course, after the tough 2020 where it was not able to happen, it's great to be back here in 2021. Yeah, absolutely. 2020 was tough for everybody. And not having this event, which really kicks the month of May off in 2020, was, a, was really challenging. And this year, even having it in May was challenging. As I was getting ready, I'm like, May's around the corner. It still <laughs> feels like they kick off to May. But we got a race coming up in a couple weeks, so it's a good way to kick it off. But the, the organization, uh, when you get a chance to work with IU Health and the foundation, all they do for our state, all they do for this facility and our fans, it's uh, pretty amazing. It's a great way to thank them and uh, raise a little money. The rebound has been nothing short of spectacular. We had a great Indianapolis 500, all things considered. You're about to have a doubleheader coming up here the first time we've seen this at the Speedway. Talk to me about it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. You know, last year we had the doubleheader, but had Xfinity and IndyCar in the road course, and then switched over overnight and put the cup on the, on the oval, no fans. This year, everybody's on the road course. We get to have fans. No racetrack's done it before with Cup and IndyCar on the same weekend, same racetrack, same circuits. So I can't wait. I know the Cup guys are pretty interested. They haven't been to this place. They haven't tested. So when they roll out on Saturday for their first practice session, fans have to be here because those guys are going to be messing our course up a little bit, trying to figure it out, which should be a lot of fun. Then we roll right into an IndyCar race and then into the Xfinity race. So that's Saturday. It'll be a lot of fun. And then watching the cup cars qualify and then run on Sunday in the Verizon 200 is going to be fun as well. So I can't wait. I love our road course. Really wide, really smooth, great curbs. I think, that, uh, I think the teams and drivers are going to have some fun. You've been here a long time. You've heard you're a very hands-on president, which is super cool. What's the biggest surprise from the drivers, the feedback or the drivers that say to you, man, I did not realize this place, your answer? Well, the biggest thing, if it, somebody's never really been here before, they just still can't believe how big it is. And then when they come and they go through practice, they can't believe how many people show up in the grandstands because race day is so different, especially the 500, than any other day. So that still is really, really impactful for folks. But I think when people are, especially they've been around road courses and they come here and they think of a road course inside of an oval, oftentimes they're challenging. And then they realize it's an FIA grade one road course, really smooth, uh, it flows really well. That's the thing I get a lot of feedback from about how much fun it is. When Will Power won, a couple of years ago, he said, man, we should have every single IndyCar road race here because the track is just so amazing. And you guys have just put together a great program with BMW. They have the BMW Performance Center out here uh, giving some rides. People are out here in GT4, so you can come out here and actually run at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've got the two-seater ride for people who want to get in a two-seater, but BMW has put a little program together that's an, really an experience. gives you an, idea, an opportunity in some of their cars, but also in that GT4 car, so it's a great way to learn a little bit of driving skill on the road course. Our official car is the Corvette and, and Chevrolet, so we got that great uh, it's kind of fun to have a bunch of OEMs that use the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to test the cars that you can go out and buy and run on the road. To me, the greatest testament for a Doug Bowles is your interaction with the people. There's never an event that goes by that you don't see some posts online that talk about you walking around and have great contact with the fans. I applaud you for it. Well, my job isn't to sit in the suite and watch the race. My job is to come out and make sure the fans are having a good time, make sure if they've got a problem, we can fix it. And I also want to learn from the fans so that next year we can make things better. And the only way you do that is get out and talk to the fans. And, and I also feel like I want to be that face and that voice that when fans have an issue or they want to say something, they feel like we really are listening. Oftentimes, big corporations, you don't know who you're talking to, so they know where they can go. And sometimes those conversations can be difficult because somebody's having a problem. But most of the time, I get a chance to hear why people love the Indianapolis Motor Speedway so much. And it's it's pretty powerful the way people got connected to this brand, just like I did. You know, my dad introduced me to it, and every day I come here, I think of my dad. We thank you very much for what we for what you do. We love this place. Well, I'm glad to know it, and, I, you know, it's hard to... For me, I've never had a day, a day of work in my entire time here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I don't need to set an alarm. In fact, if anything, i got to get a call from my wife to tell me to get home because I, I love being here, and I, and I do it for the fans. Miss Beth is here, by the way, as well. So thank you very much, the president of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Mr. Doug Bowles. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, thank you. James Hinchcliffe here in the house, driver of the number 29 Genesis Andretti Steinbrenner Honda. Great to have you out here, my friend. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Very cool event. What's it mean to you? It means a lot. You know, I think any driver and anyone that comes to the Speedway, you know, I, IU Health and what they do with, with the, the infield medical center here, not to mention everything they do downtown and around the state, uh, it's, it's just incredible. And I obviously was 
first-hand recipient of some special attention back in 2015, so this is a cause that's near and dear to my heart. And the uh, the team here, Carol Howard and everybody at Rev that puts this event on, I mean, I remember year one, I think it was 400 people. We're 3,000 people now. It's one of the must-have tickets of the year in Indy. It's just amazing to see what they've done. It's been awesome to watch it grow and just raising money for a great cause. Uh, rumor has it there's some pretty good eats here, courtesy of Root and Bone. Yeah, it's, that's not, it's not just a rumor. That's a fact. I can confirm that. <laughs> Uh, it's great to have them involved, uh, you know, Jeff McKinnis and Janine McKinnis being the, the kind of celebrity chefs, uh, the highlighted chefs in the restaurant. It's, it's, it's going so well, and that's thanks to the people here in Indy, you know. I mean, the, the support that all the restaurants needed through the last year and a half, is, it was tough, obviously, for everybody. But uh, we got through with the help of the community around us at 46 and College there, and so we're here now. We're giving out some great food, and hope you can swing by and check it out. So the trickiest question of the night. You're in an airplane with Alex Rossi. Who's the captain and who's the first mate? Oh, he's captain. He's the guy. He's in charge. <laughs> as much as I hate to relinquish charge in any sort of situation like that, he has the training and the qualifications that I, I accept I do not have in this case. But I'm learning. I've been up with him a couple times now, and I'm asking questions, and he's teaching me. So, like, you know, if he passes out mid-flight, I think I could actually get us <laughs> down now. That's, that's all I wanted was to know enough that in an emergency I could at least get us back on the ground. Those are the crazy stories we heard with like Uncle Bobby back in the day, you know? I was telling I was telling Alex some Uncle Bobby stories that he was repeating at the um, Hall of Fame induction dinner years ago I was at, and, uh, and he was giving a speech, and I just cannot believe what those guys got up to back in the day. Insane for sure. Hey, by the way, great job in the uh, in the booth with the SRX. Nice to, sh to to knock the rust off. You did a great job, man. Yeah, appreciate it. It was awesome. I mean, it's just it was it was a series that was made to be entertaining, and it was so entertaining. So it was easy for Alan and I up in the booth to call a race that was that much fun to watch. James Hinchcliffe, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes on it. Best of luck, by the way, the rest of the year. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll be right back with more of our Rev Indy edition of the Skinny. This segment of The Skinny is brought to you by Dream Giveaway. Dream Giveaway has been giving away high-end American muscle cars to raise money for charity since 2007. Dream Giveaway is known for giving away classic and new muscle and paying the federal taxes so the winners don't have to. For $25, you can jump in the game, and part of that goes to charity. You'll have a chance at winning some of the coolest cars on the planet. Check it out at dreamgiveaway.com. Welcome back to our special Rev Indy edition of The Skinny. We're here at Rev Indy with the one, and the only Charlie Kimball. This event is the first time I've ever been here. So kind of give me the lowdown on what happens on a night like tonight. Well, it starts with fun, and then you put some food, some fashion, some beverages, and it finishes with fun. That's how you build the Rev experience cake. Okay, that's fair. Now tell me a little bit about the food that you go to. How does this whole program work? Well, it's a great highlight of the Indianapolis culinary scene, which I think gets perpetually underrated because we're in the same category as far as the James Beard Awards as Chicago. And everyone thinks, ah, oh, Chicago's the be all end all. Here in Indianapolis, the chefs and the restaurants have access to some of the best local fresh ingredients. And so the food tastes better because of that. As a farming family, I know what that means. You know, coming from avocados, avocados straight out of the orchard, when they ripen, are so much better than anything you can get when you're not picking them off the tree. Now, if people don't know, his family owns an avocado farm. A big fire swept through that area. How is the farm coming back along? Well, it's rebuilding, and it looks great. Some of the trees that were replanted after the fire um, in late summer of 2018 was when the trees went in the ground. They produced fruit that was picked and sold this year, which is well ahead of schedule. I think my dad, who not only is a farmer, but is a 500 winning design engineer, has engineered the farm to be really successful. Tell me a little bit about what you've been doing since the Indianapolis 500. Obviously, the worst result that could possibly happen, which, by the way, you handled first class. What's been going on? Any chance of you getting back in the car before the season's over? I'm working on things. I think stay tuned for a couple of weeks and things 
hopefully there will be some good news coming out about that. But the, the Indy Lights commentary has kept me plenty busy. Been doing some PA work and even was on the, the PA during the Indy 500. And friends and family kept texting me while I was talking on the broadcast or on the, the PA system saying how good a job I was doing. So that's been fun to learn. It's a new challenge way outside my comfort zone, way outside, but it's still been a lot of fun. But you must understand that that's what I kind of do for a living, so don't get too good at it because I need a job. I'm getting old, and I, I need a, the jobs when I can get them. Well, we're all getting older. That's the thing. The, the clock only goes one direction. Fortunately, here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, cars go both directions down the front straight at different times, of course. But as we get older, we all find new challenges, trying to teach this old dog some new tricks, Michael. Very Zen-like, isn't he? Big picture, what's going on for you next year? Have you anything in the works? What, what ultimately do you want to do with your career from this point forward? Being a race car every day I possibly can for as long as I possibly can. So that's what I'm grinding on. You know, there's always things in the works. You know, drivers were dealers, were wheelers, trying to trying to figure out how to get a steering wheel in our hand, get back on the racetrack. Best of luck to you, and let, let's go find some food. Absolutely, thanks. Got it done. Charlie Kimball. <laughs> 1986 Indianapolis 500 winner, Bobby Rahal, three-time IndyCar champ. Why is this event so special? Oh, well, I mean, let's face it. Uh, you know, the, 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 the funds that are raised from this night uh, go to such a great cause and do so much so many great things for central Indiana and and in particular the Indianapolis area and IU you know IU health I mean it's just you know uh, there's a lot of charitable events but this has got to be one of the better ones all year long and to have it here at the speedway of course is I think everybody gets a thrill out of that that, that does come and uh, you know people in central Indiana are very generous you know and so uh, you, you kind of mix all that in and it's, it makes for a great night and and uh, just uh, this is about my third or fourth one of these I've been to. So, uh, you know, one of those deals that you, you, we go to it uh, you know, whenever possible. The team is flourishing. You guys are growing. Congratulations on the growth. I see Ray Hall Ducati. Yeah. I see new buildings going up. Yeah. Tell me what's going on behind the scenes, man. Well, Ray Hall Ducati, that's Graham. Uh, he's an entrepreneur, that's for sure. And uh, and his Graham Ray Hall performance, where you know he's they're uh, modifying, you know, do street cars for people, and that's a he's created a heck of a business. There. I'm really proud of him. And then we've got our new building. The team has a new building coming up in uh, in Zions in Zionsville, um, which scares the hell out of me, frankly, because it's a <laughs> it's a big building. There will be a, a big, big building. building. Yeah, um, super cool. But it's uh, for for us, uh, my you know Mike Lanigan and I and Dave. It's uh, I think uh, a reflection of the confidence we have in IndyCar racing, uh, particularly since Roger took over and, and his staff, and um, you know we're seeing it in great TV ratings, you know, good crowd, great crowds everywhere, and so uh, yeah, it's a big move for us, but I think one that uh, will pay off. So I'm going to ask you this question here, and I'm not putting you on the spot. Your son actually put you on the spot because he was on a previous show, and they asked him about Jack Harvey, and he said, ah, Pops is up to a lot of stuff. I don't know what he's doing over there. So are you going to give us the, the down low on Jack Harvey? Is he coming over? Well, when, we're, uh, when we've got things sorted out, we'll, uh, we'll make sure you know, okay? <laughs> There's still a lot of work to do, but uh, like I said, we're excited. I think it's, there's a very, very strong chance we'll have a third car full season next year, and and, um, you know, um, it's, we're attracting good people. I'm very proud of the team. And, um, um, you know, we've had good days, bad days this, this year so far, but just about everybody has. So it's, you know, just keep, keep pushing, you know, and uh, we'll get there. Hey, man, we want to thank you for your time here. We want to thank you for all the memories you, you've given thank us you. over the years. Thank and you. and your son, who has certainly been exceptional and watching the business model grow. I mean, you obviously did it right, and, and he's continuing on the legacy. Well, thank you. I'm very proud of him. Awesome. Bobby Rahal. We've got Mr. Handsome Jack here, Jack Harvey. Who, uh, who has done a great job for Michael Shank. You've had some great moments out here in 2021. Yeah. Great to see you out here at such a special event. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, it's just, it's great to be able to come to one of our, my favorite places, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and honestly try and raise as much awareness for everybody who helps keep the drivers safe and sometimes the fans safe, uh, you know, and try and raise as much awareness for everybody at IU Health, because without all the guys and women there, 
what we do gets significantly harder. And I was sadly here the day that James had his incident, and I think they truly saved his life. And uh, in, in any way that we can come and, you know, try and promote the community feeling, which I think is what being a Hoosier is about. Granted, obviously, from the accent, I'm not a Hoosier, but I feel like an honorary <laughs> one. Uh, but, you know, but I love being a part of this community, and this is what it feels like, a community. And I just want to come and try and help as many people as possible and honestly give thanks to the people who deserve it. Yeah, they've certainly welcomed you with open arms, and uh, and you're a wonderful ambassador for the sport. I've got to ask you, though, you look pretty wide-eyed and bushy-tailed after that long, long flight. It was a long one. Yeah, we uh, we were testing at Portland yesterday. We flew out there Thursday. We tested yesterday. We red-eyed home this morning. You got beat up a little bit, which is why you're red-eyed. Yeah, I've got a little bit of red-eye. Hey, honestly, I've, I've only done like three or four red-eyes in my life. And when I was sat in Chicago airport this morning, having slept for like an hour from there, from Portland to Chicago, and I was just sat there, I was reminded rapidly why I don't like them. But... It's a great event and it makes sense, right? I mean, I'm happy to put in a little effort to uh, try and be here today and really enjoy everybody at Rev. We certainly appreciate that effort. Hey, I'm going to dig in here a little bit now. I, last thing I want to do is get a driver in trouble because yeah. we want to make sure your career is secure. But <laughs> there's some rumors bouncing around here that there, there's silly seasons going on here and, and you might be in the beginning of it here and may, maybe a swap for next year. Uh, so I, for as much as I hate to be involved in silly season, it certainly seems like we are. Um, you know, I'm really excited for what's coming next uh, you know all I can say really that you know I've, I've had such an amazing time with Michael and Jim you know everybody at my shank racing the opportunities that we're getting now you know largely in thanks to them and those guys as a team you know helping uh, you know took a chance on me I took a chance on them you know so far every race that MSR has done in IndyCar I've been the driver so uh, obviously a change coming up and just excited to announce it shortly hopefully where we're going next but uh, Honestly, I, I so love my life, you know, and all the opportunities that we've got. And I do feel like everyone in Indianapolis has really embraced me and welcomed me into this community. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really, really lucky person. Well, we certainly wish you the best of luck going forward. I will tell you, I'm very proud to say I was a very small part of your career as a spotter at one of the 500s for you. But we certainly wish you the best going forward. You're a very talented driver, and the, uh, the sky's the limit, man. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Jack Harvey. We'll be right back with more of our Rev Indy edition of The Skinny. This segment of The Skinny is brought to you by Rhino Classifieds. Tired of all those ads and random stuff that shows up when you're looking to buy or sell your car parts? Rhino Classifieds was created just for you. Welcome to a streamlined buying and selling app created by racers for racers and race fans. Modified cars, classic cars, race cars, that special big block you need. The trailer to move your baby around the country in. We got you at rhino.co. Welcome back to our special Rev Indy edition of The Skinny. Connor Daly, driver of the number 20 U.S. Air Force Fatheads Eyewear <laughs> Chevrolet <laughs> for Ed Carpenter. Hey, I don't man. know if he pays enough for that labeling, <laughs> but we'll give him it. We'll give him it. <laughs> Great to see you out here, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome to see everyone here. I mean, um, this... This event normally means the Indy 500 is coming up, which is, you know, it's a little sad to think that we still got to wait many, many months to the Indy 500, but it's really, really cool to be, be racing out here on the road course here in a couple of weeks. That is true, actually. That is true. But I, I, uh, I love coming out here no matter what, so it's, it's fun. So I saw a picture of you standing there next to Daly Street or Daly Avenue. So my question is, if there's one place you could recommend when I go down there for me to hang out, what would that be? Oh gosh, downtown Indianapolis? I don't know. Just go. No, anywhere. Daly, Daly Avenue. Well, I have you're, no idea you're, what's down there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your own personal street. How cool was that? Yeah, I mean it's awesome. They do a great job here. I mean this uh, this track, the uh, the group of people, everyone that is involved in our motor racing events here at Indi in Indianapolis, I think they do a second to none job, just the best job ever at making sure people know that drivers are here, drivers' names, that the fact that those who are you know competing 
and and I think that's what's so important about our sport is is fans, new people, but they're able to find their guys, you know, guys or girls that they want to support. Speaking of competing, I saw you were spending some time on the sim and a cup car. Something you want to tell us? Uh, oh no, that was just on iRacing. So, I, I mean, it was it was just a race. I'd love to do a cup race, but uh, I mean, yeah, that's just iRacing. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot for a little bit of time here. Best Thank of luck to you the rest of the season. By the way, over 70 starts now in IndyCar. Congratulations. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Pretty wild. Connor Daly. Jay Howard, longtime friend here. Great to see him out here. A team owner now. Very important part of the young individuals that are working their way up through the ranks that want to be IndyCar drivers. Of course, a fabulous driver himself. Ran go-kart teams for a long, long time. Very, very successful. He himself, a champion inside of F2000 and Indy Lights, have made a couple of starts in the Indianapolis 500. But we were just chatting off camera. That was before there was a road to Indy. You won that Indy Lights championship, and you had to pay your way into IndyCar. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was definitely a little bit different back then than it is today. And, you know, part of what makes the road to Indy so special. And, and um, to be quite frank, the best open wheel series uh, in the world. You know, there's nowhere else like it. So would have been really nice to have that uh, back when I was coming through the ladder. But, yeah, here's what it is. We we enjoy it now and appreciate all the supporters and everyone who makes that happen. We'll focus on your team here in a second. Any opportunities for you to drive? I mean, you're a hell of a wheel man. You know, you never know. Maybe we always get a few calls and there's rumblings of doing the 500 every year. So maybe I'd like to do one more. Yeah, it sways back and forth. One minute I'm like, oh, I'm done. I'm just happy with the race team and what I've got going on with the driver development program and then you know when I came to the speedway here to watch a 500 back in May I was like oh boy Nothing I gotta like get it, out right? there I gotta get back out so it's one of those deals where if the right deal came along it'd be so sweet it's so hard for anybody I mean uh, you have great talent but anybody to to come back in here I mean Alio of course pulled off the the magical combination if you will but to come back in here and compete during one race against these guys that are in the cars all the time so difficult it is, and actually the hardest thing for me, uh, believe it or not, is the pit stops. Um, and it's the hardest thing on the crew as well. You know, we prove every year, last two years I came here in 17, 18, you go through practice, oh, fastest in the day, third fastest, always in the top 10. And you go, well, the driving part, I feel like you never really lose that. Um, and it's quite easy to get back up to speed. And I say easy, I use that term very loosely. Just that's the easier part of it. For me, what's really tough is, you know, hitting the right marks consistently, coming in and making the the, uh, the pit speed limit line, and then actually getting in and out of the box. That's the hardest thing, and 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 that's the hardest part for the guys as well. So, you know, every year, you know, you're having a good race, and it's just in the back of your mind. You just know, like I know I got to be quicker on the clutch, and you know, getting in gear and releasing out of the box, and you just you just feel slow. But to elaborate on that a little bit, I mean, again, you're going against a, a Penske set of four teams, a Ganassi, a Andretti, all those teams. But all those guys that gelled together for those pit stops that worked together for a, a full year at the very least, right, if not years and years. But to have a crew come together for a couple of weeks and try to find that chemistry, that timing and that mix, very, very difficult. Yeah, extremely difficult. And, you know, credit to Michael Shank and his group. You know, he's able to use some of the guys that are on the sports car team. So he's already got a little bit of that, you know, that everyone's in sync. Everyone's doing their job without anyone having to say anything. So um, and then you throw Elio in the car, who obviously is uh, amazing around this place. And so I was super happy to see them get the success that they have. And, and, and you know, it's nice to show that if it's done right and you've got the right people and everything just gels you can win the indy 500 at a one-off event and uh, as, a, as a one-off race of the year and so like you say pensy ganassi those boys they're exceptional and you know the dixons of the world uh, when they're coming in for pit stops and all that they do them in their sleep uh, and everyone else that comes here for just a month of may it's just really tough but 
you know, that's part of uh, part of the challenge. That's why we love this place, we and it, it's yeah. <laughs> so special. Well, and yeah, absolutely. So you know, he is truly the the David versus Goliath story, if you will, and he really accomplished the same thing if you think about it. Uh, Michael Schenk, I'm talking about on the 24 Hours of Daytona, he did the same exact thing. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, you know, arguably you could say the best team owner right now in terms of what he's done in a short period of time. He's been very methodical about the way his approach, he hasn't bitten off too much, you know, in what he can chew, and it's just it's been very strategic, and he's executed, and hats off to him. It's, uh, it's been amazing to see. So that you actually bring up another great point as a team owner, um, and you're very successful at, at that as well. But you have to be watching somebody like him. So your teams are in a little bit of the lower ranks, the feeder series, if you will, the F2000, the, the pros, and, and of course, uh, Indy Lights. But um, as you work with these young guns, you have to look at a team owner like that and think, all I need is a good opportunity. I, I can execute. I know I can execute. I just need that opportunity. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, you know, part of this dream and, and what I wanted to do was you know, grow with the drivers as well and, and continue that path with them from the start to the end, so to speak. And so when I see people like Shank uh, do the job he's doing, you know, people ask a lot, do you want to be an IndyCar team owner someday? And of course, yes, of course. absolutely. But I'm not going to do it just to do it and just just show up. That's it's not... just like being a driver, right? You don't want to get in a car where you're not going to succeed. It could actually be detrimental to you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I I like winning. I'm <laughs> really competitive, and I like being the best at everything we do. So when there's an opportunity to move up, again, and even this year with Indy Lights, there's an opportunity to do it, and it just wasn't right, and it made more sense for me to kind of have a partnership with Carlin, and, and those guys were just better position to you know execute and so I didn't do it I didn't want to just be out there with my cars pounding around at the back and just I don't do anyone any good no one's happy um, and that's just not how I want to do it so yeah maybe someday um, yeah we get a good partner and we can have a, a funding to do an IndyCar team one day we'll see so I think there's three races left on your schedule you're currently leading the points you said by a nice margin. It's not secured by any stretch of the imagination. You talk about how much you like to win. Talk to me about your young drivers. Who is it on the horizon that we need to keep our eyes on? Do you have a shot of this championship? Definitely a shot of a championship. Uh, you know, collectively as a group, we're trying not to uh, screw anything up and just again try and execute uh, day by day. And it's going very well. Uh, obviously, leading the championship, um, and we got our eyes firmly set on that. Um, you know, in terms of uh, keeping an eye on certain drivers, there's a lot of potential within my entire uh, development program. One guy you just can't ignore right now is Christian Rasmussen. Uh, he's been with us for quite a while now, four years. He's won at all the levels, you know, USF 2000 champion last year. We collectively as a group, team and driver, moved into Indy Pro 2000. As our rookie year, we were told, you know, we couldn't win, and um, we won right off the bat, and, and now lean the championship. So it's been been pretty special to um, to share that with him uh, week in, week out, and have that long relationship with him. So he has. Um, I know there are IndyCar teams looking at him right now, and so I'm gonna try and help him and and all the other boys on the team try and. Uh, you know, live that dream and, and make it to the top. It'll be, uh, I, I couldn't want anything more than that. For all the parents out there with young aspiring talent, boys and girls, Jay Howard. Make sure you Google it, look it up. One of the most successful team owners in the industry. He'll treat you right. If you want to win, that's what he does best. Race fans here at Rev Indy with George Steinbrenner the fourth. How many of you these have you done? Because I'm a lot, a lot older than you, and I've never done this event before. Have you been to one of these? So this is my second time, yeah. Came here in 2019 as well. And that was freezing, correct me if I'm wrong, freezing cold? Was that, like, so cold that night? 
Yeah, actually, yes, it was. It was pretty. I wasn't even here, and I know this, and how, and you were here. I guess yeah, I wasn't cold enough to really remember. But fair enough. What do events like this do for you? Obviously, being part of the Steinbrenner family, you guys go to world class events. To be in Indianapolis, to be part of the IndyCar community, to come here. What are your thoughts when you see the people at an event like this at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Well, it's really cool, especially um, why we're here. You know, that supporting the um, the guys that keep these drivers safe and and the, the folks that that uh, that ensure that you know we we get the guys are able to race every weekend, even when they get some pretty big hits. So um, to to see the community sort of come together and, and see a lot of uh, a lot of the cool restaurants and the, the cool people come out and, and and enjoy a night on the town. Did you ever dream? Growing up, Florida, correct? Correct. Did you ever dream being part of the Yankee family to be in Florida, then to be part of IndyCar? What a wild ride at such a young age. Yeah, I, I grew up around it, as you know, on my mother's side of the family. Tony Reno was my cousin. Uh, Chris Simmons, longtime engineer, my uncle. So um, just going to the paddock, being around the paddock as a youngster, I, I kind of, um, especially when I got to be a young teenager, sort of uh, under the Brian Herter shadow of... Uh, of getting to see how he operated with the one car program that he was running and and sort of envisioned myself sort of being involved in the paddock one day and and uh obviously when colton came back from europe the opportunity arose to kind of jump in a little earlier than than i would have anticipated now, colton plays drums do you play any musical instruments i do not no and then my father's looking down on me ashamed because he played about every instrument in the book i think other i think he couldn't play the trombone that was about it but aspirations as an owner as part of this IndyCar community. What do you hope to achieve as you, I mean, you're so young right now. What what, what are your goals? Um, I mean, my goals have always been pretty simple. I think I've, I've always grown up um, sort of with two goals, and that was to win. I mean, it, my only two goals really in my life going forward are going to be to win races and to win baseball games. And that's, it's simple, but that's about it. So I was watching Seinfeld the other night, and the episode where your grandfather and, and you, the supposed grandkids, come running in. When you're watching this as a kid, what, what goes through your head? How did that whole Seinfeld thing play with the family? It played well. I mean, he loved it. My grandfather loved it. Uh, he would actually get uh, faxed the scripts. Um, yeah, and, it, and they wanted it to be a portrayal that he wasn't, you know, up in arms about. But as he always liked to say, um, you know, a man that can't make fun of himself isn't much of a man. And obviously you saw that with when he hosted SNL, and, and um, he, he liked to poke fun of himself as much of a big personality as he was. We'll have some fun tonight. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Always good. Great man here, George Steinbrenner the Fourth. Thanks for being with us here on The Skinny. This episode has been brought to you by Toyota. Rhino Classified, Dream Giveaway, and General Tire. For the latest in sunglasses, optical frames, accessories, and apparel, be sure to check out fatheads.com. That's fatheads with a Z. Production facilities provided by Fatheads Eyewear Studios. All rights reserved.